Did you know that Jesus lived in a post godly era? You know, kind of like people that talk about America living in a post Christian era. You know how they say that we're not really, you know, it's not really a Christian nation that it was before, but now it's not? Well, they said the same thing in Jesus' day. You see, at the time that Jesus came, people were following the Herodians, the Sadducees, the Pharisees, the Essenes, the, the uh, I was trying to think of the other cities that were involved with all the different groups that were gathered together in temple politics that was going on as far as rabbinical Judaism and the whole idea of this new kind of Jewish expression of faith in God was concerned because, you see, the rabbis had determined that better that the nation survive under this Roman oppression than there be a devotion to God. And somehow they thought that maybe by just surviving through this time of oppression that they would be able to not compromise their faith in God even though they had already compromised themselves by giving in to graft and greed and all of those things that should not have been a part of Jewish expression. So the normal everyday people were living in kind of a post-godly era because they had heard about the Maccabean revolt, you know, and they had seen the temple rededicated. They had been told stories, kind of like Christmas stories, about how there was oil that lasted. And they knew from the miracles of old that there could have been oil that lasted, but a lot of people were skeptical. You know, they said, I don't know about that. It sounds a little fishy, you know, especially by who's telling it. And so there's always this question, and at some point in time, the common people kind of knew that this can't go on. There had to be something different. And so Jesus came. Now, when Jesus came, they expected him to, of course, get involved in politics. Well, Jesus, don't you understand that we're in a political vacuum right now? We don't have any leaders to lead us away from Roman occupation. We need to be delivered from all these Romans. The Romans are here. The Romans are here. And they wanted him to get free from Roman occupation. And Jesus never once, never once answered that call. He chose to teach, to preach, to relate the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God that had come to them in the person of himself. He chose salvation over political maneuvers. So you see, in Jesus' day, just like today, there are people that wanted political answers inside of Christian politics, which there shouldn't be. Because you see, Christian politics is all about the kingdom of heaven. It's not anything to do with America or democracy or Republicans or Democrats. It has everything to do with salvation of the soul. It has nothing to do with all these gyrations and motivations and democracies and demonstrations and altercations and divisions and strife that politics causes people when they think that they're doing right by doing wrong. You see, that's not what the kingdom of God is about. The kingdom of God does right no matter what, irregardless of the consequence. You may cost you your life, but that's the way that the kingdom of heaven is. Your life is counted as lost for the sake of the gospel's sake. Your life is counted as lost for the sake of knowing Jesus. Your life is counted as a loss from the moment that you gave your life to Jesus to live with him and have him live inside you. So no longer were you interested in the world and the things of the world, because if you are, then you are not a Christian. Jesus said, if you're not for me, you're against me. So if you're against God, then you're not a Christian. You're anti-Christian. So you see, getting involved in a lot of this political maneuvering really is anti-Christian. It's not as Jesus did. You know, there were people that said, Jesus, we want to follow you. We want you as our leader of our religious motivation. We'll, we'll start a new group with you. We'll start a new cult. We'll start you as our leader and make you our world conqueror. You will be the one that will declare as the Messiah, but you'll be our political or you'll be our religious leader. And they tried to make him into something he was not. He said, what does the law say? What do the Pharisees do? What do the scribes do? Do what they say. Do what they say. Honor God in doing that. 
Because as long as you honor God in that, God will honor you. But don't participate in their hypocrisy. Do what they tell you to do, but then be true to God. So you see, even in his day, there was political divisions and strife and all these maneuverings going on with religious circles where people were trying to divide and conquer, where the Sadducees wanted to be in charge, the Pharisees wanted to bring this new kind of Judaism in, rabbinical Judaism wanted to be the rabbis in charge, the synagogue movement wanted to diversify because the kingdom of God, or the kingdom of the Torah, and the worship of Torah, and the worship of law, and interpretation of law, had gotten to such a degree that they wanted to build it even greater so that it would go out to the world, but we had to keep it safe from infiltration of all these other philosophies that the Greeks had begun to do, and how this phileo, uh, how this, uh, people like Philo at the time, and how this Hasmonean type of dynasty had been infiltrated by this kind of philosophy from the world that was the Hellenistic Jews that had come from outside of Israel and were not part of the elite that were inside of temple politics. So Hellenism had begun to invade Judaism and made it its own by bringing about rabbinical Judaism, how the rabbis could interpret the law of the Torah. Jesus said, no, I say unto you, whoa. So Jesus didn't get involved in those kinds of fights and discrepancies. He said, you follow me, I follow God, you follow God, whatever God tells you to do. When his disciples came to him and said, look, over there, they're, they're, they're baptizing in the name of John. They're over here, they're, they're, they're doing these things. Should we call down fire and destroy the city because they're not following you? He says, no, what are you doing? God is in charge. Let God be in charge and then let him do as he chooses. For no man can call the Father and receive from him except that God give it to them. So Jesus didn't call down those religious leaders that were around him, except the scribes and the Pharisees. He didn't call down those of his own, John the Baptist, and those of his own party, Peter and all those. Rather, he said, let God lead them according to how he chooses to lead them. Because no man can receive, a, receive from God except that it come from the Father. And so Jesus recognized that the Father was in control that God had it all in control. Today, we don't look at it quite the same way. We act as though we have to do something. We have to make somehow changes, or we have to make some kind of structured evaluation to make it fit our society. And yet Jesus wasn't about that. He was still about teaching, what? Himself, the way of salvation, and His Father, to have a relationship. For you, to have a personal relationship with God. It was not about worrying about all these other things, about what happens to Christianity, post-era Christianity, modern-era Christianity, humanism, socialism, um, you name it. Anything that people modern days have gotten involved in want to say, oh my God, we've got to watch out for this and watch out for that, because they're no longer looking at Jesus. So, of course they need to watch out, because they get bored with Jesus. They get bored with having a personal relationship. They get bored with... Christianity and want to get into the theology of it as opposed to the person of it. The person of Christianity is that personal relationship with Jesus that you could talk to him every day. Because at times God won't talk. God won't say a word to you. And you may feel, oh, well, I need to move on to something else. That's over with. I'm sorry. I'm gone. And you're being tested and tried to see whether you turn to the left, the right, or whether you trust in the Lord with all your heart, meaning not in your own understanding and all your ways acknowledging him and letting him direct your path. Because the world wants you to give your soul literally to Satan. It wants you to follow after the worldly system, the world and its ways. It wants to influence your soul because it can't destroy your spirit. Your spirit goes to be with God. But it can influence you to be distracted from what God has told you to do. And what God has chosen for you to be accomplishing in your life as you are living it today. You need to always consider well the words that Jesus said when he said, Love not the world, nor the things in the world, for the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life, all of these will lead you astray. But rather seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. The Lord was by stay. Truly in vain is salvation hope from the hills and from the multitude of mountains. Truly in the Lord our God is the salvation of Israel. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. 
my God and my strength in whom I will trust, my buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. Cry out and shout, thou inhabitant of Zion, for great is the Holy One of Israel in the midst of thee. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivers him. The righteous cry and the Lord hears and delivers them out of all of their troubles. The eternal God is your refuge and underneath are the everlasting arms. So what so that we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. For who is God save the Lord? Or who is a rock save our God? It is God that girdeth me with strength and makes my way perfect. By the grace of God, I am what I am. In everything that we do, we must recognize that God is the one working in us. God is the one that's working on us, and God is the one that's working through us. We are participating with him by allowing that to go unchecked in our lives, to allow him to do what he needs to do with us and to do to us and to do through us. Because if we don't, then what we're doing is we're hindering the Spirit of God. And Jesus said that the Spirit of God would not always wrestle with man. He would not always be working on us. There would come a time when even the Spirit would say no, and we would be left to our own devices. At that point in time, then despair sets in for the humanity of God's own creation, that he made man in his own image, and man has rejected that and then determined that he no longer will yield to the Spirit of God. And at that point in time, he is left to his own devices, where once man has hardened his heart, then God hardens his heart, even as he did unto Pharaoh. So there comes a time and a place where God will not always wrestle with man or struggle with man to allow him this time of grace and mercy to be accomplished so that their purposes will be frustrated that God has determined for man, but rather he will say to you, if you were to sin and you continue in sin, enough, and they'll walk away. And how sad the day would be if we were to find ourselves that we had never been saved and we thought we had been, when in reality God says, by grace are you saved, I have given it to you freely, and I would have given it to you and continued with you if you had spent time with me to know whether you were mine or not. So you see, religious leaders, religion, a lot of that will always kind of distract you. But a relationship, you know if you have it because you can ask God for it. You can talk to Jesus daily. You can walk with him in a simple way. You can humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he'll lift you up. You don't want to be involved in always being so active, always being so going, running, doing, and participating that you no longer spend time one-on-one -on -one alone with Jesus. Because if you do, you'll find out whether or not one-on-one -on -one alone with Jesus you are, or in fact, you are not. While it is day, we are told we should work. And then yet the night will come when no man may work. And this is the day that the Lord has made. So we are called to reach out and touch and share and care about those that don't know Jesus. We aren't told to get involved in the world and its manipulations. We aren't told to get distracted by all the attractions in the world. We are commanded and reminded by the Lord our God to follow Him and to walk in His ways and to do what He has told us to do today. Because if we choose not to walk in the way of the Lord, then you may find yourself walking in the way of man. And when you find yourself walking in the ways of men, you find yourselves condemned along with them. Follow the Lord while He may be heard, and seek Him while He may be found, and know Him, for He lives inside you. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you shall be saved.